Hi, I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasandaram. Welcome to my channel. Some of you have uh, requested a video on the modified blood score. So we will have a quick review of this. There are many methods to assess the gestational age of a premature baby. So uh, the most uh, important one and the most commonly used one is a mother's menstrual history based on the last menstrual period. This can be complicated because sometimes the mother is not sure about the uh, period dates, the cycles may not be regular and uh, this con complicates the issues. Prenatal ultrasonography is again very commonly used and uh, it's quite reliable if you have early confirmation. So within the first 12 to 14 weeks of pregnancy, if you have the scan related dating, it's fairly reliable. However, beyond the uh, six, 14 to 16 weeks gestation there are many factors uh, from the fetus from the placenta which can affect the fetal growth and other parameters so the measurements have a variation of plus or minus two weeks after this period the postnatal maturational examination is used to corroborate the above and this also has uh, inaccuracies and it may be related to accelerated maturation of the fetus due to stress in utero and the same factors which affect ultrasonography may affect the postnatal maturation examination. There are many tools. The most commonly used one is a modified Billard score. So the maturation examination is an indirect measure of maturation. It's based on indicators of fetal neuromuscular and physical maturation which we will see next. And as we discussed the in utero stress can affect the growth and maturation. Usually they go in opposite directions. For example, a condition which affects the baby to be growth restricted accelerates the maturation. So the growth is low but the maturation is faster. And a condition like gestational diabetes which causes the baby to be large may actually slow down the maturation. So we can see that in terms of the lung as well as the neurological system in a gestational diabetic mother. So the different parameters that are affect, uh, assessed in the neuromuscular part is the neonatal muscle tone and the tone is usually active or passive. The active tone is affected by illness, maternal medications, acute perinatal compromise and level of alertness. So we don't rely on active muscle tone as there are so many conditions which affect that. The passive tone is useful for evaluating maturational development as it is not affected by the above. So most of the uh, tests which are used in the Ballard score for example depends on eliciting passive tone in different ways. Uh, the basis for the neuromuscular aspect of the Ballard scoring is the progression of the tone development and the same applies to the physical uh, for parameters as well. There is a progression of the physical features that are measured. So the neuromuscular tone development proceeds in a caudal to cephalad direction. So the lower limb matures more towards the foot first and then near the hip joint and there is a centripetal direction so it's towards the center so from the periphery to the center so the lower extremity passive flexor tone develops slightly ahead of the upper extremity tone and the distal passive flexion precedes the proximal passive flexion so these principles apply as we use the different tests like uh, the popliteal angle the square window and so on so the passive tone can be assessed using extensor stretch or passive flexion so it can be mean the same this evaluates the degree to which the limb can be flexed passively at the joint by the examiner then there is a resistance to passive extension where there is a tendency to maintain the natural flexion so uh, the arm recoil is an example of that and angles of recoil of a previously flexed position so you try to extend and see how long it stays in that position so all of you are familiar with the Ballard score and this is uh, suggested by Dr. Jean Ballard from Cincinnati in US. It's uh, Dr. Ballard here and this was uh, published in the early 1970s. It has been modified and it's a new Ballard scoring which is used to cover the extreme premature babies as well. So as I said we have the neuromuscular score and we have the physical maturity score and we have posture, square window arm recoil, popliteal angle, scarf sign and heel to ear. We will be reviewing how each one of these is measured. The physical score is more clear cut. So you have uh, skin related changes, very sticky, friable, transparent skin, 
gelatinous, red translucent, smooth with pink visible veins, superficial peeling, cracking pale areas. So, uh, presence or absence of lanugo hair. The plantar surface it's more related to the heel to toe measurements. So you can see here it can go up to minus two score for the heel and more than 50 millimeter with no crease and then as the baby matures you start getting creases in the anterior third and then over the entire sole. The breast development from imperceptible to a full areola and 5 to 10 millimeter bud in the more mature babies. The eyes, the fusion of the lids is a more important part in the eyes and that becomes the earliest stage. The ear cartilage starts from a score of zero when the pinna is flat and stays folded and then the pinna cartilage starts becoming well formed. So the eye only features in the first uh, minus one and zero scores and there is minus two if it is tightly fused as well. In the male, the genitals are assessed as well with uh, the smoothness of the scrotal skin or the presence of rugosity as well as whether the testis is already descended and the testis has become uh, in a pendulous scrotum with deep rugae. In females, the clitoris is prominent and the labia is flat in the extreme preterm babies and this changes in grade and uh, reaches where the majora covers the uh, clitoris and minora in the more mature babies. So you have scores from minus 1, sometimes uh, some scores are up to 2, minus 2 and then it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 is only 1 in the skin parameter and you score these individually and then you combine the score. The same with the neuromuscular, so you have minus 1 in 4 of these, there is no minus 2 in the neuromuscular and then you have 0 to 4 and there is 5 only for the popliteal angle. So the combined score is assessed here and then you have the score which indicates the approximate gestation. So this is plus or minus 1 to 2 weeks as well depending on the other factors that affect the maturation of the baby. So minus 10 score might indicate 20 weeks, minus 5, 22 weeks and so on and a score of 50 indicates a post mature baby so typically a term baby at 40 weeks has a score of 40 so you don't need to remember these numbers you have the charts available and you have the websites like perinatology website or the ballard score website which give you these details as well so a quick review of the neuromuscular aspects so the posture of the baby is one of the key aspects that is assessed and these are the postures so the fully extended posture has a score of zero and a slight flexion in the distal part so as we said the distal matures first and the uh, knee flexion starts and then it increases and the arm flexion starts here as well and then there is a frog leg posture where the knee is uh, abducted and the hip is abducted and the knee is flexed the score of four happens when the hip is starting to be adducted as well so this is the score of 4, this is the score of 3 and this baby is partially flexed, partially flexed so this is the score of 2. So uh, obviously you score uh, the posture accordingly and then you enter the score here. The square window is uh, a measure of flexibility or resistance to uh, passive flexion. So you have uh, the maturation when the immature baby is there, the ligaments are still not mature and they don't allow stretching much. So uh, it's almost 90 or more than 90 degrees. So you have a minus one score in a very premature baby, extreme preterm. Then it reaches 90, then it starts bending more. And in a term baby, actually it's quite flexible. So the angle is zero almost. So these are the angles of so 30 degrees, 45 degrees, which will tell you what score to enter. It's a rough uh, measurement, so you don't need anything to measure the angle. So approximately you're going to put the score. And uh, this is the square window. The arm recoil is fairly easy to assess, um, but the most important point in these uh, passive extension techniques is not to leave the arm extended for a long time because the muscle fatigue of the flexors being stretched might affect the interpretation and the baby's hand should be to the side so uh, the effect of gravity is not significant so first you bend and release and see how far it goes back so uh, the slight flexion at the elbow and then you release it and uh, to the maximum possible and then it recoils back so the uh, recoil of zero and then you have score of one when it slightly comes up uh, you have a score of two when it starts recoiling more and three is almost like a full recoil 
but the four is scored only if the fist is uh, face is coming back to almost the the fist is coming to the face almost popliteal angle is quite a useful tool and this continues in the mlt sound scoring later on as well so uh, it helps to assess and the main thing is uh, it's not very reliable in a baby who is born by extended breech or frank breech for the first two days or so so you can either score a score which is consistent with the other parameters that you scored for the neuromuscular or you can wait two days and score this uh, the neuromuscular maturity uh, popliteal angle will start from minus 1 where the knee is over extendable so this is the part that may happen in a baby with extended breech even so we shouldn't use this uh, a score of 0 when it's uh, almost like 160 degrees and 140 at 1 and these are the angles 90 degree uh, is a score of 4 so in a term baby you usually get 90 and in a post term baby you may actually start getting some tightness so it's less than 90 so this is like what you will get in a post term baby so term baby post term baby is for the popliteal angle the hip should be stabilized with the other hand when you are extending the knees and you hold the foot and stretch it the next sign of neuromuscular maturation is the scarf sign and uh, here the point on the chest to which the elbow moves easily prior to significant resistance so you uh, stretch the you hold the hand on the other side and stretch it across the chest and see where the resistance is happening uh, so depending on where the resistance is noted if it has uh, the elbow has almost crossed the chest on the other side it becomes minus one if it is just reaching the other end it's zero and then the midline is 2 and just before the midline is 3 and if it's hardly moving it's 4 so these are the markings and the score that you give them the heel to ear measurement is a degree of extension or resistance to extension with the hip girdle and uh, here the posterior pelvic girdle flexors are the ones which are resisting the uh, extension we should see where the heel reaches when there is significant resistance and these are the landmarks so if it reaches up to the ear it's totally flexible so it's minus one if it reaches the nose it's zero chin level is one nipple line is two umbilical area is three and femoral crease is four so you have uh, different levels and according to the maturity it stops short do we need these scores so there is a difference in the clinical approach depending on the estimated gestational age it also helps you in prognosticating so we should keep in mind that there is always a variability of minus one to two weeks or plus or minus two weeks and so when we prognosticate to the family we should keep that in mind as well a rough idea at the start is adequate so i hardly do uh, the ballard score in clinical practice so we usually have uh, early booking and we have the ultrasound based dates so we go by that and usually the weight can corroborate as well unless there is a UGR uh, in a country like India where booking status is often not known early dating is not available the mothers may not remember the LMP in those situations you may consider doing the Bellard score remember that these are premature babies who don't like to be handled there is always a risk of infection or uh, disturbing the babies a circulation compromise so handle these sick babies with care and prioritize i mean this is not the most important thing when the baby is sick obviously your management will be guided to some extent but you will have many other parameters to guide based on the hemodynamic changes and other parameters so be very gentle and don't repeat these movements the baby scores will actually uh, declare the maturity of the baby so this is in a nutshell a summary of Ballard score i hope uh, this is useful and uh, do uh, share this information with friends who may find it beneficial as well. Thank you.